Good evening, everyone. This is Voices of the Alternative World on the Diamond Network. It is April 19th, 2016, and it is close to Earth Day. It is the beautiful month of April, springtime, nature is blooming, and the grass is green, and we have a lot to celebrate this month, and we also have a lot to be aware of. So... We are going to celebrate Mother Earth on this call. We're going to celebrate the goddess energy, divine feminine, and every way that we can help heal and balance ourselves in our planet and all that lives on our planet. Blessed be. So now I want to, um, we're going to do the law of one, and I'm going to call in some energies here, some beings. In particular, we want to call in Gaia, Mother Earth, feel her presence, and know that she is here with us as she has made her presence known on other diamond shows. But most of all, she is all around us in all her beauty. And we want to call in some of the other goddesses, you know, the, the, the Isis, Venus, just the goddess energy in general because we are seeking to balance the male, divine feminine, the divine masculine. We want to call in all the, the earth energies and the gnomes and the elves and the fairies and nature spirits and, of course, all the angels, all our, the uh, galactics. So... With all that being said, uh, Dale is going to read the or recite the the law of one. Uh, good evening, everyone, and and here, here is the law of one. The law of one: we are all one. When one is harmed, all are harmed. When one is helped, all are helped. So so therefore, in the name of who I am, and I am one with all there is. I ask that only the highest good happen. So it is, so be it, and thanks that, that, that this is done. Amen. Amen. Blessed be. Yes, well, there are many issues that we can address here in Earth Day and healing the Earth. One of the main ones is the use of chemicals by big chemical companies like Monsanto and DuPont and Gentia and they're used they have been used all over the world and they've been they've been causing health problems they've been disrupting our our uh, ecosystems and just causing so much havoc because they you know people have gotten too used to their use you know and they think well it's an easy solution for for weeds for insects but so much is being um, known, so much more is being known now about the harm that these chemicals can cause. And uh, particularly the one the one weed, weed killer, which is, has been very widely used, Roundup, has been very widely used by both industry and and just people around their houses. So, you know, we'll just get rid of these weeds in the driveway and, you know, we just want to get rid of these nasty weeds. And boy, their pets and their kids walk around there and pregnant mothers and it can cause birth defects, it can cause cancers of all kinds. I mean, there's a the list of diseases that Roundup can contribute to is quite long. Even autism, brain cancer, breast cancer, non-Hodgkin's lymphomas, one of the top conditions on the list, kidney disease, and there, there are now many um, countries that are starting to ban it 
And if they aren't banning it completely, some of their largest retailers are just refusing to carry it any longer. France is one of those companies, the companies, <laughs> countries. In Germany, I'll just I'll just read off the ones that are starting to ban and um, cut back on the use of glyphosate. Glyphosate is the active ingredient in Roundup. Argentina, Sri Lanka, Brazil, Colombia, and Canada, they're all in part or completely or in part uh, cutting back on the use of glyphosate to a much greater degree than we here in the United States where Monsanto has such a strong influence in our government and, you know, that they, we are we are much or behind them in this way. So, and there there are alternatives. And if, if a person's person really needs to kill their weeds or feels they need to kill their weeds, there are formulas available. You can find them on the internet, and they can they're composed of vinegar used with um, salt and oil combinations, and these can be very effective. And uh, the recipes can be found on the internet easily found so we would um, there is someone with us this evening that has had a first hand experience with uh, with um, being sick being made sick from the use of Roundup uh, so Pat would you like to tell your story well um, uh, I, uh, let's see um, I live in a, sub, a, a suburban subdivision, uh, and uh, all of my neighbors, most of them ha- uh, either do it themselves, but most of them actually have services where they come and, mm-hmm. you know, lay all this stuff and keep their grass. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I've been sensitive to chemicals because uh, from from birth I was used in government mm-hmm. experiments to develop vaccines. Mm-hmm. I've had polio twice. I've had all kinds of crazy things done to me. And so I never put any kind of of poison in my yard. However, uh, because all of my neighbors do, all of the critters in the neighborhood uh, all moved to my front yard. (laughs) All had these huge two-and-a-half-foot-tall mounds of fire ants in my front yard. And one more thing for my uh, homeowners excuse to use to sue me to try to seize my house because of my front yard. So uh, I tried everything I could think of and you know, the kind of, you know, shrugged their shoulders and kept on rolling. So in desperation, I, I went and got uh, one of those things that you apply with a bucket, you put it in the water, and pour it on the mounds, and it did. It did kill the fire ants, and I, I was crying because I felt I was the whole time. I'm sorry, I don't mean to kill you, but what am I gonna do? Uh, and and so what ended up happening was, off my first response, the fire ants didn't get mad. They got even. They snuck up and crawled up my legs, and I had fire ants oh. over my legs. On top of being poisoned by the um, uh, splash of water from the the Roundup, and within three days, um, my started going numb. My legs started going numb. Uh, I was having horrible muscle spasms, uh, and then I started breaking out in um, sores all over my body. Mm. And I kept getting worse and worse. I ended up having to walk. Uh, I could barely stand up. I could barely walk. I had to uh, use a cane for um, uh, a month. And uh, I'm still, you know, not back to where I was before. Uh, and this has been about four months ago this happened. Four mm-hmm. five. So uh, I just, you know, cautionary tale. It doesn't look, I mean, it stinks. But, it, you know, it's sort of like when you're at one of these big lot stores and it's like that's all you see. Everything has Roundup. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, everybody uses it. And, and if you ask for anything that 
is non-toxic. They look at you like you got three heads and shrug their shoulders. So, uh, you know, um, I, I don't know what to say to folks beyond the fact that I sure wish that somehow or another, and it's st- starting to come out, you know, just how evil Mon Satan is. You know, they people call Mon- Monsanto, they call it Mon Satan because Bill Gates is the biggest stockholder in that company. And mm. he knows exactly well, what he's doing. He and his father are uh, founders and heads of the eugenics movement in the United States. His father was one of the founders of um, uh, um, oh, that company that just got in trouble for stealing fetuses and selling them and putting them mm. in food. Um, Anybody know the comp- the uh, uh, charitable organization? Uh, it's mm. be about population control, but but it's it's population destruction is is their goal. They're they're the eugenics movement, the people that want to reduce the population by eighty to ninety percent. Mm. And and uh, so anyway, uh, Bill Gates and his father are big hoity toities. Um, and uh, so, you know, they're proud of the number of human beings that get killed by their GMO products and their Roundup. And their, and and I'm 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 assuming that everybody knows that Roundup started out as a, a military defoliant that was used mm-hmm. in Vietnam, and it was called Agent Orange. Right. Right. Yes. And the government knew exactly what they were doing, and in fact, I'd be willing to bet you if you looked up who owns the patent on that, I bet it's somebody like Rumsfeld, who also owns the patent on um, a Spartame. And, uh, you know, that kills people, too. Uh, so this is who's mm-hmm. running our government. This is, these are the powers that want to stay, continue in charge. So I'm with all the folks that say if enough people just walk away from it, and and my and my takeaway, my learning from this thing is, if I get a ten foot high ant hill, I'm going to go talk to them. I am not going to put any more Roundup. I'm not because I mean, it almost killed me. But anybody that would have done mm-hmm. it for me, it would have made them sick sooner or later. Well, that's a powerful story. But you did uh, you did get over it. I mean, not that it, not that it's, you're completely over it, but. You're better than you were, you're saying. Yeah, and at least I saw the connection. See, most people would have just went to their doctor and gotten more toxic medications. and put Oh, them, yeah. Yada, 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 and down that slippery slope to hell, you know. So um, I learned my lesson with Roundup uh, 30 years ago when they had the first Gulf War. I was a counselor, and uh, the Veterans Administration was sending these GIs to me who were very, coming back very, very ill and showing symptoms of systemic poisoning. And the IRA, I mean IRA, the uh, Veterans Administration, VA, uh, w- was sending me letters and really pressuring me to find all, that all these, all these people's symptoms were just in their minds. Hmm. And I got no. big the the VA, and they ended up blacklisting me, and I've been persona non grata with the VA ever since. Uh, And it's just hard because these guys knew, you know, they had no place to go, you know, they get to me, and I was as helpless as they were. Uh, But at least, you know, that I had a lot of GIs that just, you know, cried, broke into tears when they tell me, because it not only affected them, it affected their children. The children from that mm-hmm. era had all kinds of health problems from their sperm being destroyed by the Agent Orange. And so this is much bigger. It's not a small, it's a very big thing. And it's just that there's so much of it, it can seem overwhelming. But you know what I did? I did what was in front of me back then. I wrote the feedback and I said, I'm not a doctor, but I'm also not an idiot. I know the difference between depression, you know, you're a spoiled brat and you get the way, <laughs> and mm-hmm. you're seriously ill from systemic body poisoning. Well, and, that's, yeah, that's, thanks for 
Yeah, I know she has more to say, but I really appreciate your sharing all that. Just, uh, you thank know. you very much. It's, that's uh, yeah. it's really a, a, a story that uh, needs to be told. You know, people aren't aware of all the hazards mm-hmm. that are right under their noses. Uh, and I was, you know, I was just uh, thinking, uh, Sonny, that uh, uh, Misty uh, uh, is generally comes on and, and gives a reading before we start, but maybe she's not present here tonight. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was just a, you know, a way to to uh, to add some additional uh, spiritual light on on uh, on the proceedings. But uh, in any event. Uh, I just uh, that was just a thought that occurred to me, and if if, if Miss is in the audience, uh, I do uh, please by all means uh, uh, come forward and uh, and and uh, give us a reading, and if not, then we'll hopefully she'll come come back next week. And uh, so anyway, that was that was just uh, didn't mean to interrupt, mm-hmm. Sonny. It's just uh, no, no, that's good. That's good because that that would be a, a good contribution if she is here, but. Misty, if you are here, just let us know. I don't think she is. Okay. Um, so she would have let us know probably at the beginning unless she came on later. Yeah, well, you know, I don't want to dwell on the negative stuff, but, but this is so important that this um, that this information be known, you know, because there could be people listening to the YouTube later and, like, you know, they just kind of, you know, kind of, Oh well, we're going to use some Roundup on the lawn, you know, and something like that. And and it's good that uh, that this information get out as to just how dangerous this stuff is. And yeah, um, yeah it yeah. it is being used. It is being banned in other countries. And and uh, I, I and, had a thought that uh, was brought up within this discussion of Bill Gates and uh, and population mm-hmm. control, and it directly has to do with Mother Earth because. You know, it's a funny thing that that Mother Earth cleanses itself, and and I think that if if uh, if we continue to go on the path that we're on, that we we uh, instead of being a, a help in, in 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 nurturing and caring for Mother Earth, if we become identified as a as a as a toxic element, I think I think we'll we'll soon be extinct. Mother Earth will go along fine. It can go on fine without us. So I think it's incumbent on us as human beings to change our behavior and the way we think if we plan on uh, 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 not not becoming extinct because we're destroying everything that we depend on, the air and the water and the food. It's all it's right. all becoming toxic to us. Well, yeah, it's, uh, it's the ones that are, have been in control all this time and have um, kind of hypnotized other pe- the rest of the population that these ways are are okay you know that these things are okay and you know they've just been hit, you know through through the media and, and the TV and ads and all these things it's just been uh, brainwashed people but but I have a lot of um, faith and confidence in the current evolution of uh, people waking up and. And the information is circulating so much more widely through the internet and through uh, Facebook. And of course, we have to be discerning about things that we read. But but we can look at everything as a whole and see what information is coming through and their sources, and uh, see what really truly resonates with us. And uh, all this stuff about Monsanto and GMOs and herbicides and pesticides and the monarchs disappearing and the bees being killed and, you know, all these things, there's a lot of evidence to to back this up, that that these that this is a crisis, that people are doing some wonderful things, you know, people are, are um they're planting more milk you know, milkweed to uh, help the monarchs and the bees survive and, you know, there are people that are really stepping forward and doing just Great things to help Mother Earth, and and um, and the, the another thing. Well, I, I want to just say a little bit here. Uh, back in the 70s, when I was living on Maui with um, one of the family people, 
um, somebody wanted to spray herbicide, and I think it was wound up around the house there. And I immediately, I mean, I didn't have a lot of information, you know, but I immediately knew this was not a good thing. And I went up, went away from the particular house for the time being, but that I had to come back again at some point. You know, there's just something, something in me just went, no, this is not good. You know, it's it's killing living plants. It's killing part of our environment here. And um, and then, of course, living here, where I currently live for years, um, there's a, an irrigation ditch that runs through the property, and the neighbors used to come over and spray the weeds. And I, you know, I just told them in the first year or two that I was here, I'm going to I'm going to take care of these weeds. I'm going to get out there every night and I'm going to clip them down. I'm going to just do whatever it takes so you guys won't come back and spray. And I did this for years. And it it worked to some degree. Still, somebody would come over once in a while and and spray. And, uh, you know, not the whole thing, but part of it. You know, I, I was always alert and aware of who was coming over to work on the ditch. And um, and then I started having problems with my back where I couldn't do this anymore. You know, not to the degree I was doing it. So I, uh, I started just communicating with the people that came over more and talking to them. And, and uh, I believe now they are a lot more aware of the dangers of this chemical and the people that come over are doing things that are much, that aren't toxic. They're just, they're weed eating, they're, they're just cooking and just doing, you know, much better things, much more helpful practices. So that, that's that been kind of a campaign I've been on for years here. I've been living at this current place for 11 years. And, uh, you know, I have cats that go out there and they come back in the house and track it in. And and, uh, and there's a place I like to walk, too. And I just, you know, of course, it gets sprayed along the side of the, the canal and eventually it seeps into the water and it gets... So somebody that has organic, trying to have organic food, you know, growing organic fruits and vegetables, you know, that the seepage of the water, the chemicals in the water, and there's still probably some that get in from further down. But even our um, irrigation ditch is trying to use it less. They they uh, irrigation uh, company here called Nevada Irrigation. They used to use a lot more. They're still using it, but not as much as they used to. So uh, there is encouragement uh, out there that people are becoming more aware. And uh, oh, I also want to bring up the uh, the hemp, you know, the hemp, uh, industrial hemp. That's just so important that um, we get back to that. I mean, it, it just has so many uses. It just has from paper to clothing. And I'm not talking about marijuana, even though marijuana, is, medicinal marijuana has helped a lot of people. And, Hemp is a it's a related plant, but it's not the same plant. It won't get you high, <laughs> as far as I can tell. But um, yeah, it was used in the early early days of this country, and for quite a long time until the 30s, and then they, then it got banned, and all this along with the marijuana probation prohibition, and you know just this big scare thing was brought up, and all the ads and you know, and it was just, you know, it just, you know, so as a result, the timber industry cut down a lot more of our forests, so wood and pulp, and of course, cotton is used a lot in clothing, but then synthetic fibers were used more, and cotton uses a lot of pesticides in its production, and um, hemp, from what I understand, can be grown without any, and I'm sure that cotton could too if they really, if they really put their minds and hearts into it, they could grow it without pesticides. So, and then of course we 
this the ocean and the plastics and the plastics you need to find a different way of making plastics and I believe that it is out there. The technology is out there. It just has to be used. It would really, really biodegrade quickly. You know, not take, <laughs> you know, it's like a half, la- millions or not millions, but hundreds of years to, to degrade and then just go into the ocean and kill our, kill our fish and our whales and dolphins and sea life. So, so anyway, it's Earth Day and uh, coming up this week, and we just we can give thanks to Mother Earth and Gaia for all she gives us, and she really she really recognizes our thanks and will give back in, in any way that we can help assist in in her healing. It's our healing as well, and this is leads us into the the divine feminine aspect which needs to be more fully recognized you know the um masculine over over you know un, unbalanced masculine energy not the healed balanced masculine healed balanced feminine but the what a lot of us call the patriarchal you know, this all about control and uh, you know just just uh, the suppression of the uh, female energy and uh, we aren't we aren't here to polarize we aren't here to be feminists to to be down on men or down on anything like that because we recognize that that both energies are exist in us we, we both have both masculine and feminine within us and the sooner we can be aware of that and uh, balance it within ourselves is called a sacred marriage within ourselves then we are truly balanced i mean we'll have whatever gender we have you know in our bodies but uh, we'll have a greater balance of, of masculine and feminine within us and then we can move forward and have much more healthy relationships with the opposite sex or however, you know, we choose to have our relationships. And um, this last Diamond Show Monday, yesterday, was very powerful and always talking about all these things. And it's really the time to heal the um, male-female sexuality it's really time to to just get this out of the gutter you know <laughs> it's been put, brought into the gutter for so long you know and we need to just um, bring it up to a higher level a healing level because it's a very powerful force it's a very powerful energy we see what it does we see how it drives people and um I mean, it's there for a reason. It's there to, to, for one thing, to bring forth new beings, new bodies, but a lot more than that, with the the um, sexual energies. The uh, they're they're here. They can be very healing if they're used properly, or they can be very destructive, and we've seen that how they're misused and abused, and the planets are are aligned in such a way to encourage this particular healing right now. As Cynthia was talking about last night on show, Thursday show, and I encourage people to listen to to this, these shows on YouTube because they're very powerful shows, the one last night and the one last Thursday. And um, Saturn has been... Saturn just turned retrograde, but it's in a place of sacred courtship, which Cynthia was discussing. And this is very important in the sense that it's go within and we heal these things within. We may have to face a lot of our own demons and our own um, traumas, but that's necessary. We allow the feelings to move and uh, move through them and flow, but not act them out, not 
be destructive with your blaming or other people, you know, for things that we're feeling within ourselves. So there's there's a lot going on right now. (laughs) It's a powerful time we're in. Does anybody want to say more about this? Well, uh, the thing that that comes to mind for me is, you know, as as we've transformed and evolved over the years, and every transition that we've made, you know, from from feudalisms to the monarchies to the republics, and this transition that we're making now. Uh, to go into the fraternities, and you know the the there there the the uh, all of the reasoning, you know, uh, of who we are, what we are, where we're going, and why, and uh, you know the the evolution in our thoughts about believing something and thinking about it, and then knowing it, and then reasoning on it, and then and then then acting. Uh, this process. Uh, this this uh, exercise we have to go through to create a new world. It has to be articulated and it has to be thought about and reasoned out. And uh, you know, one of one of that's uh, it's the uh, the skeletal framework that we we build a new a new uh, a way of thinking or consciousness on uh, is in the process of being developed. Uh, we're, we're, we're discovering, you know, it's like the discovery of, of any truth. Uh, and, I, you know, I, I always go back to Galileo because it's so, it's so, uh, uh, it's so vivid. You know, when, when, when we believe something that isn't true and we, we accept it as truth and we live by it, and then, then the, the truth is revealed by someone's discovery that, that negates everything that we thought we thought was true and we have to uh create a you know create a reality based on that truth and the problem we have all of the things that we're we uh are living with now uh are are uh, you know we have to we have to put aside to go into the future and you know those things are rule of law and uh you, you know we have there are different layers, and, and then, then the way we, uh, our commerce, how we conduct ourselves, and, and you know, we determine that uh, this person's worth a dollar, and that person's worth five dollars an hour, and this person's worth three hundred dollars an hour, and we've, we've, uh, you know, and this station is is uh, is the most powerful, and so uh, we we assume well that since it's the most powerful, well that that's got to be the right because. If uh, if they weren't the most powerful, uh, God wouldn't give them that power. If uh, you know, and it's kind of if that was the case, uh, you know, if, if if Hitler, you know, by by folly and farce, uh, somehow gained control of the earth, then that must have become God's will because uh, you know, otherwise he wouldn't allow them in power. So there's all these false ideas in our head that that. Mm-hmm. Support the reality that, exi- that exists that we have to reason and think our way out of before we can create a new reality. And so, uh, you know, ownership of land and use of money and and the, the romantic idea of you know we come we see we conquer because we can uh, all that all that has to be we, we have to accept the fact that we're mortal and we're fatally flawed. And that we have to submit to a higher power, uh, and we have to seek out the, the will of that higher power, and 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 to go move forward. You know, we 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 can't we can't move forward with the old, old ideas of forcing uh, uh, others to to believe what we because we, you know it's a mutually assured world. It's a world of mutually assured destruction. So the the use of force. Is not uh, is not acceptable, you know, and 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 then a, a, another layer of falsehood is that we've got a, a global free market economy that that uh, thrives on conflict, and uh, so they're 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 advocates of, of violence because if they if they accept a nonviolent uh, uh, rule, 
uh, then they go extinct. There's the all they know is money, and so they have learned, uh, uh, you know, falsely that uh, there's profit in war. You know, so war is good. You know, they uh, you you blow everything up and destroy everything, and you sell arms to do it, and then then you get to make a whole lot more money uh, rebuilding it again. And so they're they're and they're they're stuck in this cycle of fear. Uh, that and and separatism and uh, supremacy and uh, it's all it's all false. So I my my uh, a lot of time is spent on on thinking about what w- those things that we have to change in our thinking and behavior before we can move forward. And I and I, I you know sometime in the future I'd like to, to devote a whole program to that. And that's just basically building the framework. Uh, and, the, and the foundation and the structure to the, so that we can move forward, you know. Yeah, well, that I agree. Um, the way things have been done for so long they have reflected the patriarchal, you know, as you mentioned, conflict and and the violence and warfare and force and all that. All that is reflective of the. Uh, the patriarchal kind of out of balance, you know, out of balance masculine, <laughs> you know. That, well, to, uh, funny, yeah. You know, the thing that I see, there's, there's been just as many uh, 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 horrific uh, matriarchal uh, rule as, as patriarchal. I don't think it's a, uh, it's gender specific. I think it's, it's systemic in the nature of human beings that they. They are they are all fatally flawed and have yet to submit to a to that higher power and accept uh, a, a, a rule of, of nonviolence and peace and love. Well, we um, we know that the human nature can buy into those kinds of things of control, uh, but what I'm really talking about is uh, the more pure in essence of what the masculine and feminine are, and I'm not trying to demonize the masculine at all. Um, and and the fe- and I and I've seen plenty of out of balance uh, yeah, women too. I, so I'm not, you know, and, and I just think that the balance, uh, the, the 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 imbalances that we have, we you know, it's the old Voltaire uh, scenario where you know the, the the there there is no greater evil than one. That that a belief that is declared supreme and therefore claims for itself uh, the right to kill. Uh, as as mortals, we 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 are subordinate to to the universe, you know, and it's it's ours to learn about it and seek out uh, the, the best idea that for the time. And then and then it, it, it's not that the the human beings fail. It said that well, the idea wasn't uh, good enough, but we learn in, in the practice, and we all so we all say, okay, well, uh, based on all the knowledge that we have collectively, we say, well, I, we think this is what we should do, and then we all say, we all agree and uh, share the responsibility and say, okay, well, let's try this, and then when it doesn't work, there's no there's no uh, failure. It's just to say, okay, well, listen, I think well, I, I, I think we've got an idea here. We just have to do it differently. And so that's that's what's going to propel civilization forward is that we, we're we just dealing with ideas. We're not dealing with individuals or opinions. Uh, we're just saying, we, you know, we're using all of uh, everything we have to come up with a with an idea that we think is going to work. And if it works out, then we just we continue on that path. And if it doesn't, then we, we try something else. But we're... We're never stuck with a law that stays in place for a thousand years that doesn't have any merit, and we just follow it because that's the law, you know. Uh, and we're like we're mindless, we're mindless beasts that uh, are condemned to doing a thing but without a choice, and that's uh, you know that's that's this uh, imperialism that's dominated uh, the, the scene for thousands of years, and that we have to. We have to move away from yeah, Well, we're becoming much more uh, able to follow our inner guidance 
and, and yeah. what really feels feels right. You know, we need to we need to get into our feelings, and uh, you know, there's some negative feelings that need to be dealt with and moved and cleansed. And um, I'm sure, we all have that. But we, you know, the the true inner balance is reached. We our our perception of everything becomes a lot more clear. Of you know, it's um, a balance of the heart and the mind, you know, the yeah. feeling feelings and reason, and, and we have um, we can just be guided by spirit, you know, in the creator, you know, however we we want to say, you know, the the guidance moves within us, the creator, the you know, our spirit, and, and we know what it feels like. We know when we're on the right path, you know. Yeah. We, we, feel moved in a certain direction, you know, the energy's there on a deep the, level. The the yeah. dominant uh the dominant thing dominance yeah. that comes to the forefront forefront are, are things like love and truth yeah. and wisdom and justice and freedom yeah. and peace. And those are gonna be the axioms that, that uh that govern uh, govern us, you know, and if, if the ideas that come forward resonate you know, on all those uh, notes, then we uh, we proceed, and that that's why we'll, we'll, we'll and that's really going to actually be the birth. I think uh, you, you talk about being born again. Well, we live we've lived in this uh, this shell of mortality, and we just kind of you know like a, inside of a pinball machine. We bounced around and bounced around and bounced around, and so for the first time in the history, uh, in our history, we're going to be uh, a conscious participant in shaping, uh, shaping our reality and shaping the future. And that's that's going to be in constant change. We're never going to again going to be stuck with anything that is uh, substandard. You know, uh, we're not going to be frustrated by, uh, you know, having an idea of an electric car. And, and, and still burning fossil fuels and poisoning the atmosphere. You know, that, those those kinds of things mm-hmm. aren't going to happen because we're right. going to su- submit to a higher truth, a higher light, a higher right. wisdom. We won't have any, we won't have any limits. Before. No limits. Hey. No, <laughs> no limits for the individual or yeah. the group. It, 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 and that's the, to, to get to that point, you know, it's it's like you're coming out of the womb. You know, it's it's a... It's it's really uh, the the most important step that I think uh, takes place on any planet anywhere in the universe, and uh, you know it's 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 nice to just even though you know we may not be able to experience it in full, we're just we're just getting a little bit of a taste of of. Well, uh, you said a key word. It's like coming out of the womb, and if you yeah. were on last last night's call. I read something, uh, how the Statue of Liberty came about, and the intention of the creator who created the Statue of Liberty, a beautiful poem that the Statue of Liberty read, and basically it says we will bring in the destitutes. We welcome all, you know, we welcome all, the orphans and all that, and look at our politics right now. But anyway, the Freemasons actually started out as a secret society uh mystic school you know mystics you know like jesus the supernatural they knew the they they knew the deep uh the the deep magic for the good i'll just say that and so then it got absurd absurd from bad people or whatever but the masonry do you know the compass sign i read this recently the compass sign where Mm -hmm. you know the compass freemason sign well actually they took women out of freemasonry there's women so they took the female Mm -hmm. part out so the compass sign is like the bottom one is a triangle. It's a vagina. <laughs> and the yeah. top triangle part is the male. And that's sex. And what is sex is being uh, be, being in the bridal chamber, even by yourself. Your feminine is harmonizing with your male energies, and your male energies are harmonizing with your feminine inside of you. Here's a good clue. Are you getting sick of living in the world? Are you getting sick of humdrum, humdrum routine, going back and forth to work, do this, humdrum, humdrum? If you're getting sick of it, that's a sign you're your changing. But what I'm seeing is what I got out of it, and I learned those two, and then we talked about sex last night. America, United States of America, if you listen to what Lady Liberty says, she's actually calling us to be married inside of ourselves first. 
you know, right. what I just explained. And and right. and to be married, and that's just taking all the programming out, just surrendering to God and say, hey, you know, if you have meditation, you have uh, rough feelings come out, come up, I'll just say hello there, and I love them. Anyway, so. That's, that's great. Yeah, that was very it's, good. It's, yeah, a multi-dimensional thing going on. I, I and 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 we study, you know, uh, most of the people in America, which is all different races, are all originally from Atlantis and Lemuria or Mu. Mm-hmm. And right. so, the right. Statue of Liberty, the intention of the creator of the Statue of Liberty in the poem, I believe America is, even though the rest of the world is really waking up towards, you know, like E.T. and all that. I think America, United States of America, the people. The, are culturized and somehow all of us, I mean all races put together in USA, to be able to get do that marriage inside of us, have self sex, you know, get married to the feminine and, and the female and male and harmonize. And when that happens, we can really uh, send love and miracles start happening, let's put it that way. So, isn't that beautiful? Very beautiful, yeah. I was explaining that in, in my own words earlier or trying to explain it but I, I did um, oh. encourage people and I just to, came and reiterated it yeah, yeah I, I, and, I, and, and, and really cool. uh, Elizabeth the, the, the essence of this thing is inner harmony and, and mating the left side of her brain and the emotional side and the, and the, uh, mm-hmm. the intellectual side uh, the, the reason and logic with the emotion and feeling and have both of them come to fullness and ripen as one, and and then then we become a complete person, and out of that out of that complete person we can have a complete world, you know. And uh, and and the and so the energies that are coming in are to help us help us get married inside of ourselves. They're coming from the sun and all that. They're coming here while on Earth. Here we are talking on a call, thinking and dreaming, and while at the same time the energies are here mixing with us to bring us to the action of it and to bring us into maximum efficiency, minimum effort wrapped in supreme happiness in every situation. What do you think about that? I so think that's pretty pretty Yeah. Well, pretty well. <laughs> that's just the, yeah, the times we're in right now are just just it's just powerful for all of this to take place. And um yeah, and all the astrology readings that Cynthia did and, and everything, it just seems to be pointing in this direction. Yeah. And I, I was explaining about the divine the um divine feminine and masculine energies becoming more refined and more balanced and and you know, that I'm not really wanting I'm not blaming men, you know, but men have been the masculine energy has been way, way out of balance for too long. Yeah. And uh, and so we're just coming into harmony now, recognizing well, you the, need yeah, women, the You need the women, the female, to born things, to born, born them, and the males impregnate, and the females born them. Nothing will get born on Earth if we don't have female male together. <laughs> and, 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 right. Not just the in a literal yeah. sense. Yeah, not just in the literal, but spiritual, mental, physical. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The mag- magnetic and electric energies were explained very well last night. You know, mm-hmm. what I used to do on these kind of calls, I would listen to them for a long, lots of them, lots of these kind of calls. And every time the call, I wouldn't waste any of the information on these calls. I would ask God during the call or, you know, when I was in meditation, I would just say, hey, I want all that. Give it to me. I ask. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and uh-huh. I think, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Well, I felt like, you know, this was swept up. And, I was, you know, last night during the, the call last night, um, I was just so filled with this, oh, yeah, you know, this is really what's happening now. And this is what's been going on in my life for a long time and recognizing the, how I got off base <laughs> in a certain way, you know. I mean, it's it's all for the learning, of course. And uh, and, and how- someone like you, Sonny, and someone like you, Dale, that has been learning about this stuff for years and years and practicing it, but not yet, you know, it didn't come to fruition. You know, like you hope, you hope, you dream, 
and it never comes and you get involved and then you go on and keep dreaming. You never give up. You per- keep persevering. But right. you guys, yeah. now this is the time you're, you're really going to see the tangible stuff we've been waiting for a long time. You're going to cry. So am I. <laughs> yeah. Well, Enjoy. It's, 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 it's really it's a profound thing to me, you know, because, uh, you know, you go back and back to the sixties and, and, you know, I'm at my, in my aunt's house and I'm, at, I'm on a vegetarian diet and boy, I'm really feeling better than I ever felt before. And, and uh, it was really great. You know, we, we juice up our, uh, carrots and our, our gallons of celery juice. And I go to the beach and I was, I was living, living a dream. And when I, everything was fine until I started talking to the people in the world around me and, I discovered that I was soon a committee of one, and uh, and I just uh, I, I you know I, I had some rough bumps uh, uh, to get my head squared away, and I'm I, now at 66 years of age. I've, I'm 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 kind of I'm kind of getting a little bit of a handle on it. <laughs> well, I was raised a vegetarian. You know, I was raised in such a different environment than the rest of the world was yeah. around me. You know, and and. And I, it was just, you know, going out there and seeing what other people and other, just when I went to school and what they were eating and, and wow, you know, it's just, um, it, it was, it wasn't easy and, you know, no. to um, integrate with the world at all, you know, no, being no. like that. I, and, I, I, uh, I was, it was, uh, it was a battle, you know, and unfortunately, yeah. Let my uncle mentor me because I uh, I could have easily gone into uh, you know I, I I I have an empathy for these suicide bombers that are are, are uh, you know and hopelessness and hopelessness and despair uh, resort to the to the you know their baser their worst instincts you know and uh, for lack of for lack of guidance and lack of light you know there's nobody around to to, to balance uh, that insanity out, and they're just surrounded in in darkness, and uh, it just is overwhelming. And uh, fortunately, I was, you know, some, you know, a, a hand came down from above and lifted me up. And uh, I, I, you know, I, I would have been a, I would have been a revolutionary. You know, I, I could have easily gone. Uh, who was that that weird bomber we had that was a mathematician? Uh, I, I I can't think of his name, but he he hid up in a cabin, and mm. he just he had so much uh, bitterness and resentment and hatred and anger that he just he just wanted to just destroy this thing. Well, uh, that that isn't the, that isn't the road. Uh, the, you know, you just uh, you keep uh, persevering and 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 love and and uh, you just uh, keep persevering and persevering and and eventually it wins out. You know, sometimes it. You can have, uh, and this this was a quote in a waspy that always I kind of stopped me in my tracks, and it says uh, the creator allows uh, evil to triumph over good for a season, you know, and then you think about the creator's th- seasons, and geez, you say, well, you know, some of those seasons last twenty five thousand years. So, yeah, so it, a long it, season. Yeah, it, it's a it's, from a world standpoint, you you just say, well, it's you know, let's just. Uh, it's, it, it, from a mortal standpoint, you say, "Well, maybe we should just have a have a nice cup of tea and and let this thing pass." And uh, maybe maybe in a few hundred years we'll be able to do something. But let's not get all bent out of shape because uh, it, it, this is a particular cycle that that a world or a, uh, is in. You know. Well, it's it's just teaching us in a certain way. It's causing us to, in a certain sense, if we handle it right, so to speak, it will, will make us stronger and just uh, more knowledgeable. Just like, I, mean, I guess, you know, back to the Owasi briefly, what they what they said about the, the original beings that were, were pure and like the eons that they, they, they were pure, but they weren't strong, you know, in a sense of being grounded and, and you know, in themselves, they they were open to the guidance, the higher guidance that was moving them all the time, and that was beautiful. But they had and, to um, integrate, you know, with the earthier 
earthier yeah. um, is this. The rationale that I came up with, uh, you know, I'm always asking, asking my creator, well, how come there has to be evil? And he said, you know, mm-hmm. this is this is where freedom comes in. Uh, you know, we're always mm-hmm. free to choose, and then so we can we can create whatever reality we want to if we just choose it. And you know, uh, the 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 choices in the past have been chosen out of fear and uh, hate and anger and violence, and now all we have to do is make choices out of love and truth and wisdom. And and the end result will be what we really desire, you know, is justice, peace, and freedom. And uh, so it's just a, it's just a, you know, saying, well, the world's not flat. It's it really is round. And then, well, it's not really round. It's kind of a multi-dimensional, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, it's it's you know, it's got the dynamics that we we weren't aware of, and those those dynamics. Uh, help us create this world that we've been seeking. This is a free will planet. Um, yeah. In a sense that we're, we're able to make a lot of mistakes, so to speak, you know, and hopefully learn from these mistakes. And then the dark energies came in and, and took control. And, 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 on, and, and on top of all that, we, you know, what we're learning in Sunshine Before the Dawn, it's a true story, uh, a group of many awesome beings gave our DNA one of their special picked gifts from their races. And that's what's turning on a special mm-hmm. mixture of brilliant DNA that's never been, we're like a brilliant uh, test that's never been done before. So that's why... You know, we're special in in a way. Yeah, we're special diamonds. So beautiful. I mean, think about that. Aren't we honored? Aren't you honored to be a mixture of many different beings, their special gifts? Wow. Yeah, Yeah. uh, genetic mix of everything. Hold on. What's happening? Well, wait a second. <laughs> well, it's, um, we can come back Hi. to enjoying the. Okay, I don't know what's what happened, Hi. but yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, sorry, guys. I was done. Sorry. Were you talking to me? Oh, it's, uh, well, I I didn't know what was. What was going on there? <laughs> well, what the- somebody knocked on my door. Somebody knocked, knocked on my door. The, okay, what? I know. Did somebody else come on? Well, oh, no. Does anybody to- want to come in and, and say yeah. hi and add their two cents? Should I check the room, somebody make sure it's unlocked? Yeah, I didn't lock. We didn't lock the room. But okay, let me check we- it for you guys. Yeah. Okay, now the room's unlocked. Yay. Okay. So you guys can come in if I can add. Well, Pat gave her story earlier about her experience with Roundup, which was uh, interesting because we talked about that quite a bit. Anybody else um, out there that wants to share or Pat wants to share more or anything? Questions, Yeah. Well, if I am if I'm a microcosm of the macrocosm lately during meditation, it's uh it's like oh, cuz I always ask for maximum efficiency, minimum effort wrapped in supreme happiness even during my healing. So, during meditation it's like this whole group of years of just say a chunk of my childhood and I go there's many many thoughts of, you know, like the dreams you have when you're a kid and thinking and mm-hmm. And then you think back after that, and those dreams never came true. And then the, you know, the hurt feeling. So it's like that. And then I say, okay, and I love them. Those feelings, and it's changing. So it's actually um, healing. And and it's like something saying, okay, I'm bringing all these, and you're healing through them and smoothing them out because all your dreams you've ever dreamed and intended are all coming true all at once. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, lots of coming together at this time. 
Boy, I tell you, yeah, the the dream state is uh, it's been very active lately, and just bringing in a lot of uh, just dimensions of our lives. At least this is what I've experienced from um, past and people I've known in the past are coming in, and, and of course some of them are actually reappearing in my life now. So it's just like a coming together of times and space and dimensions and just, you know, quite a time that's unfolding and and the healings. Now, I uh, truly recognize that there's some imbalance in sexuality has created much disease and the misuse of this energy has attributed to much disease. And so being probably within this body that I am in right now. <laughs> and um, so uh, we are open to miracle healings and things, uh, everything taking place in this new, the energies that are coming in. And interestingly enough, as I spoke of last night, um, it was mentioned about the dark forces being um, being lifted off the planet like Saturday mm-hmm. With all the you know the incoming gamma rays and you know the wave X coming yeah. in powerful times you know very powerful time that we just went through with it this weekend and, yeah uh, dis ease just remember just think of that word Sunny disease dis ease yeah. oh it's disease exactly. turns from dis ease so what are we gonna do we're taking the dis off of the ease. And we're going back mm-hmm. to ease and the supreme happiness. And, right. and and if I could say anything to anybody, you know, through these, you know, we have these calls and everything and people go to them and you just got to, you, you know, get your perception of listening ca- to calls out of the, out of waiting mode, waiting. It's like waiting. There's a mode like that. It's a program mode, I think. Waiting, waiting, waiting. But just just decide for yourself just to enjoy each day and enjoy your changes and just kind of like step back from yourself each day and observe and see how you, you're changing already. You know, you feel an emotion, like a situation you would have really got upset in. It's like you're, it's, an, it's, it's nothing to you now. And you like observe that and have fun with that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we can observe rather than get caught up in a maelstrom of, <laughs> I was you know, the takes us over. Yeah. Once, uh, once again, uh, it's, uh, it's that time to bring the show to a close. Yeah. If uh, anyone has anything to comment or a question, uh, this would be the time. And uh, if not, then uh, we'll, uh, we'll say yeah. our good nights and uh, invite everybody to come back next week. Yes, and honor Mother Earth, and, and especially this week, if not all the time, we need to all the time. It's just Earth Day and the beauties of this time of year, and just, just give thanks to Gaia for all she's given us. So oh, I wanted and to Gail and Sunny, I was going to mention the Facebook uh, page, U- Ubuntu Tribe, Ubuntu Tribe. Michael Tellinger, you ever heard of him? Ubuntu. It's U B O N T U. I think Ubuntu. If you go on there, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we want to talk about. I just haven't had a chance. So Michael, tell us your stuff. Michael, okay, okay, writing that down. Ubuntu tribe. U B O N T O. Something like Ubuntu tribe. Hmm. Anyway, it's on Facebook. Uh, Okay, you guys, and I'm you guys in the show, and I'm just. Being a participant. Oh. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, it takes all of us to make it uh, work. So <laughs> you, you want to close the recording? Yes, I will. Thank, thank you, all of you that are here tonight, and blessed be for beautiful April and springtime and Mother Earth. Good night. Yeah. See you next week, folks. Bye bye. Good night, sweet dreams. Good night, Liz. <laughs> I'm glad you're well.
Are you looking for healing or a change in your life to help you enjoy it more fully? You might benefit from a galactic energy reading and clearing from Chris Jacobs. Chris will work with you on a soul level to clear unseen negative influences, implants, programs, contracts, and energetic blocks. Chris Jacobs is a gifted energy healer. Contact him today at ChristopherStephenJacobs at gmail.com.